Everybody who's done anything in Supercross, myself, Ricky Carmichael, Jeremy McGrath, all these guys came up through Loretta's. It's the biggest, the best, most pristine amateur national in the world. If you want to get on the radar of amateur motocross, this is the place to be. This is the proving grounds, because if you win here, you beat everyone. And I think that's what makes this the crucible of amateur motocross. It does not get any more competitive than Loretta Lynn's. Despite being hyped as the number one amateur rider in America, Justin Bogle still has to qualify through the South Central Regional in Colorado. First time being here at Lakewood, never ridden at altitude. It feels really cold up here after coming from home, being like 105, humid. It's like 60, feels extremely cold. I don't know, it's good, track's fun, so it should be a good weekend. Yeah, getting a good start here is gonna be important. A lot of tight, twisting turns here that are gonna be hard to pass. High altitude, uh, Looks like quite a bit of rocks in this. The roost is really gonna hurt, so you don't wanna be behind for very long if you can help it. First time at Loretta's, I was on 50s. I think I got like 13th or something. And then I went back on 60s and got like 31st. I mean, it's always stressful trying to get two Loretta's actually. You never know what can happen and all that. I went a couple years not even making it to Loretta's, you know, so. 2011 will mark Bogle's final year as an amateur, and his sights are set on going out on top. It means a lot though, last Loretta's, pretty big deal. It'd be amazing to go out with, uh, with a win from there my last year. As predicted, Bogle eased his way through the South Central Regional by winning all nine pro motos. That was a good weekend, went nine for nine, got all qualified, so we're headed home and get ready for Loretta's. While Bogle proved to be the top rider out of the Midwest, he's yet to face the bulk of the competition he'll be facing at Loretta's. Back in Florida, the second day of racing is just beginning. Day one saw multiple winners in the pro classes, and day two is shaping up to be epic. I'm sitting uh, third and fifth on the last day, going to the final three motos. If I can get top seven, that's, I'm happy with that. I'd like to win, but I'm, I mean, my main goal is just to get top seven. Our game plan is get through this. If we walk out here with three sevens, we're in the show. Three sevens are just as good as a one. Kyle Peters and Jacob Hayes shined on day one, and they have their sights set on making day two just as successful. I think Hayes and, and Peters are on their own level to, to the point that they're, I think they're just in a little better shape than we are. Pro Sport off the gate. Here comes the leaders. Hayes comes through. Then you got Peters, and then Gavin Faith. While leading the race going into the final motos, disaster struck for Hayes in the form of a blown motor. I don't have a spare motor, so what we're doing here is robbing Freeberg's motor. I want Hayes to be in there. He deserves to be there. I mean, he's one of the top guys all weekend. I'd hate to see him not get, be able to get to the gate, but, uh, you know, rules are rules. AMA rules state that a rider must use the same bike frame throughout a race weekend. Hayes looked towards Kawasaki teammate Zach Freeberg for a replacement motor. The guys at Cowie are over there busting their butts too, trying to get that motor out for us so we can uh, swap it out and try to make it back to the game. It's just been one of those days, you know, you got to work through it and uh, this is what we do. Mission successful. Now the rest is up to Jake. Round the first turn looks like Kyle Peters with the whole shot. As Peters faith 1-2. Then you got the 26 of Wetland. Wetland having a solid ride in third. Gavin Faith not holding anything back. The number 26 of Wetman working his way up here. Third is Peters. Fourth is Hayes. So we got second overall. That's a ticket to the show. That's all that counts, right? Ticket to the show. This weekend went good. I got the monkey off my back. I'm definitely going to need a little more speed, but I think I'll be able to get it. I'm happy, you know, just got qualified. It's, it's the hardest thing to do. You're only going to get out of what you put into it. Uh, we didn't put a lot into it, it showed. I made it in all my classes, so we'll be seeing you guys at Loretta's. Faith, Hayes, and Freeberg took home Moto wins from Gatorback, but it was Kyle Peters who took home all three overall wins in the pro classes, solidifying himself as one of the top competitors. Meanwhile, Dakota Alex has made the trip to upstate New York to seek redemption in the Northeast Regional. However, the stars would fail to align once again for Dakota, as a brutal practice crash left him with a mild concussion and out of this year's Loretta Lynn's lineup. Dakota will return home to Vermont to lick his wounds before heading back down to Georgia to start the whole process over again. All right, did I get knocked out? 
need you. Dakota will miss out on this year's action due to bad luck. But Matt Bachelia is fortunate enough for his broken leg to be healed in time for the South Central Regional. We're out here at the Freestone Regional. It's my last chance to get in and uh, it's one of the last regionals. So just uh, going through this weekend hoping to get top six. You know, my, my leg hurts pretty bad today, I'm not gonna lie, but uh, you know, I'm just hoping to get a good gate pick in this first moto. Uh, get a good start and just finish top six, you know, I just want to hang in there and get to Loretta's. Yeah, come on, Matt. Get up there. Keep your head, Matty. Come on, Matt. Well, when Matt went down in the first moto in the Schoolboy 2 class, finally he came around, you know, and couldn't get his bike started, so anytime you tip one of those things over on a hot day like today, you know, that's really hard to start. I'm a little disappointed, but uh, you know, like I say, I can't be too bad because he hasn't ridden very much. Bichelia was able to hold on in the Schoolboy 1 class to qualify second overall. I'm pretty bummed about it. I've only gone to Loretta's once in one class. Uh, you know, I didn't even end up racing the second two motos in it because my leg is just done for the weekend. I can barely walk on it right now. I'm pretty disappointed, but at the same time, it'll give me one thing and one thing only to focus on at Loretta's. It'll give me a little bit more time off to relax, and uh, I'm confident in the one class. Bichelia may be out of Schoolboy 2, but after a surprising ride in his regional, Cooper Webb's sponsors have allowed him to race the more advanced class at Loretta Lens. Here we are at the local Crystal Coast. Getting, uh, get some track time in with all the ones here today, so pretty excited. After passing his final exams, Cooper Webb is able to give his training his undivided attention. I don't really feel a disadvantage, you know, going to the schoolboy class because I, I kind of feel like I'm on level playing fields now. Me being s smaller, if not the same size as a lot of those guys, I think it's not really about the bike, it's about the rider. Months of training and sacrifice have finally led to this point. In a sport where you're only as good as your last finish, it's time to put the hype to rest and go racing. Thousands seek the splendor of a Loretta Lynn's title each year, but only a few will ever taste its true glory. This is the road to Loretta's. This is motocross.